Hello Grade 12s and a warm welcome to all of you. At the end of the year, you will be required to write an NSC or National Senior Certificate Examination for History. In order to prepare for this examination, it is important that you know your work and therefore it's very important that you study all the relevant content. However, it is equally important for you to know the skills that we teach you because although the examiner is testing your content knowledge, they are also testing your ability to extract, interpret, analyze, and argue. But don't stress because I will help you to revise these skills so that you can better prepare for your examination. Now in today's lesson, we are going to start with history paper one, and we are going to take a closer look at question one. Question one is a source-based section, which focuses on understanding the origins of the Cold War. And today we are going to revise level two interpretation questions and how you should go about to answer them. But remember all of the skills that we are revising today will also apply to all of the other topics that we will cover in grade 12. Okay, so let's start off by briefly taking a look at all of the things that we are going to cover in today's lesson. Firstly, I'm going to give you a very brief outline of the origins of the Cold War and what content you should focus on when preparing for this section. Then, for the rest of the lesson, we're going to revise your source-based skills. But today we're going to focus on how the examiners will ask you level two interpretation questions and how you should go about to answer them. Let's start with a brief outline of the origins of the Cold War. When you prepare for the section of work, it is important that you understand that the Cold War was an ideological war between two world powers of the time, America and the Soviet Union, capitalism versus communism. You must know how America and the Soviet Union both attempted to spread their influence in Europe after World War II. This includes things like the Iron Curtain, America's policy of containment, which consisted of the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plans, and the Soviet Communist Information Bureau, or Common Form, and the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, or Comicon. You must also study the Berlin Crisis, the period between 1948 and 1961 in Berlin, with specific focus on the Berlin Blockade and the Berlin Wall. Now remember, in accordance to the Grade 12 CAPS document and the examination guidelines, the examiner can focus on any of these aspects when they examine you in your NSC examination at the end of the year. So it is very important that you study all of this content in preparation for that examination. Now that we know the content that we must study, let's focus on the skills that we will be examined on. Remember, the examiner is not only going to test our content knowledge, they are also going to test the skills that we need in order to study history effectively. And the skill that we are going to focus on today is level two interpretation. Now in your NSC examination, the examiner will examine the skills that you will need as a historian to research history effectively. Remember, history is the study of past events. Historians are the detectives of history, and it is their job to try to reconstruct the truth based on the available evidence. Their task is to collect or extract all the relevant evidence from various primary and secondary sources, they will then interpret this evidence. Once the evidence has been interpreted, they will evaluate its reliability in order to know whether or not it is a credible source of information. Then the historian will evaluate its usefulness as well as the limitations of the evidence in helping them understand the historical events. They will then corroborate the evidence with other sources by focusing on the similarities and differences. Once this is complete, they will use the information they have gathered to write an article, essay, thesis, or a book about the historical events. 
Now, all these skills will be examined in your MSc examination. Each skill will fall within a specific category of questioning. There are three categories. Level one questions will test your ability to extract evidence from various sources. Level two questions will test your ability to interpret evidence from various sources. And level three questions will test your ability to evaluate a source's reliability, usefulness, and limitations, as well as test your ability to compare similarities and differences from various sources. Okay, so let's take a look at level two interpretation questions. These are questions that test your skill of interpreting relevant evidence from a source. But what does interpretation actually mean? Interpretation is when you explain what you think the evidence means and you write it down in your own words. So ultimately, when you get a level two interpretation question, you are never allowed to quote or paraphrase your answer. Now, how do you know that when the question you are reading is a level two interpretation question? In order for us to identify a level two interpretation question, we need to look for the following words. Explain, comment, what do you think, why do you think, and the message the author is trying to convey. When we see these words in a question, then we know that we are automatically dealing with a level two interpretation question and we need to interpret the evidence. Okay, so let's look at an example. The question in front of you reads as follows. What message is the cartoonist trying to convey regarding the implementation of the Marshall Plan? Now, when you look at this question, which part of the question tells us that this is a level two interpretation question? If you said the word message, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level two interpretation question, we have to answer it. But first we need to know what the question is asking us to interpret. So let's read the question again. What message is the cartoonist trying to convey regarding the implementation of the Marshall Plan? What do you think this question is asking us to interpret? It's asking us to interpret the message about the implementation of the Marshall Plan. So now that we know that we must interpret evidence because of the word message, and we know what information the question wants us to interpret, are we ready to answer the question? The answer is no. Why? Because we first need to look at the mark allocation. Okay, so I know that this might sound silly, but taking notes of the mark allocation is actually very, very, very important. And the reason is because so many times students throw away unnecessary marks because they don't actually check the mark allocation. And the mark allocation is very important because it actually tells you how many facts you need to include in your answer. So in front of you, we see an example of what a mark allocation in your NSC examination will actually look like. So you can see that the example says one times two equals two. And when we look at those numbers, it is important for us to understand what each number actually means. That is gonna then help us to understand how much we need to write. Now the first number, the number one that you see in front of you, that is the most important number for you as the candidate writing the examination, because that number tells you how many facts you have to write. So you can see that that number says one, which means that if this is your mark allocation, you will only need to write one fact. The second number that you see, which is a two, that number tells you how many marks you will get for each fact that you give. 
So in this case, because it is a two, it means that when you give your one fact as an answer, you are going to get two marks for it. And then the last mark, that just indicates the total amount of marks that you will receive for this question. And you can see that it is two marks. Because for one fact, if you are going to receive two marks for it, your total will be two marks. Okay, so let's get back to our level two interpretation question. Now, when we look at the mark allocation, how many facts do we need to put in our answer? If you said two, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says two times two. So now we are finally ready to give our answer. But before we do this, we must first read the source carefully, and then we must decide what information to interpret, which will best answer the question. So let's read the source together. So it says, this is a cartoon entitled The American Wall. It was published on the 4th of October, 1947, and it depicts the implementation of the Marshall Plan. Now in the cartoon, we can see the following. At the bottom of the cartoon, we can see the word Europe. Then we can see three characters. The character on your left hand side that is holding the brick at the bottom, th that is Truman. How do we know that that is Truman? Because if you look very carefully on his top, it actually says Truman. Then you have another character on your right hand side, and that character represents US Congress. How do we know that character represents US Congress? Because again, if you look very carefully on his top or on his overalls, it actually says the word Congress. Then we can also see a dollar sign, and we know that the dollar sign represents America's currency. And then we see another character at the top of that wall, and he's busy building that wall, and that character is General George Marshall. Then behind the wall, we can see a tank, and on the tank, we can see a little white flag, and that flag says famine. Okay, so now I want you to take all of that information that I gave you, and I want you to look at the cartoon again. I'm going to give you about a minute to do so, and then I want you to try to give me at least two messages that this cartoonist is trying to convey regarding the implementation of the Marshall Plan. So remember, what you're going to be doing now is you're going to be interpreting the information that you see. And your interpretation ultimately has to explain the implementation of the Marshall Plan. Okay, so if you focus your attention to the bottom corner on the left hand side of the slide, then you will see my interpretation of this cartoon. And what I want us to do now is I want us to go through my interpretation. And then I want you to look at your interpretation and I want you to compare the two. Okay, so the first point that I make is that the Marshall Plan is being implemented in Europe. Now we know that this cartoon is depicting the implementation of the Marshall Plan because it tells us that. We also see the word Europe at the bottom of the cartoon. So this then tells us that the cartoonist is trying to say that the Marshall Plan is being implemented in Europe. The second point that I've made is that US Congress did not want to agree to the Marshall Plan in the beginning. Now how did I see this? Well, when we look at the character that represents Congress, and remember that is the man on the right-hand side, 
he's leaning on a dollar sign. And that dollar sign actually represents America's currency, okay? Now, we see that he's not just leaning on the dollar sign, but he's also thinking, he's contemplating. So the cartoonist is trying to tell us that Congress is contemplating, they're thinking whether or not they are going to award Truman American money so that Truman can continue the Marshall Plan. And that ultimately tells us that Congress was he hesitant. They didn't want to agree to the Marshall Plan in the beginning. Truman first had to prove the necessity of the Marshall Plan to Congress before Congress actually passed it. Okay, then the third point, I say that the U.S. implementation of the Marshall Plan is to protect Europe against famine. Now, how did I see this? Well, when we look at the Marshall Plan in the cartoon, it is actually depicted as a wall. It says the American wall. That's the Marshall Plan that Truman is busy building. Now, that wall is over there to protect Europe because the word Europe is there. So we need to understand what is that wall or the Marshall Plan trying to protect Europe from. And behind that wall, we see that there is a tank heading towards Europe. And that tank says famine. So if that tank reaches Europe, then that means that Europe is going to be filled with famine. And that would obviously be as a result of the war. But this wall that Truman and Marshall is trying to build, which ultimately is the Marshall Plan, is going to prevent famine from getting to Europe. So that is why I said that America is implementing the Marshall Plan in order to protect Europe against famine. Now, going back to my interpretation, have you noticed that when I wrote down my answers, I didn't copy from the source. I'm not telling you what I see. I'm explaining to you what the images in the cartoon means. And that's the important thing that you need to remember regarding um, level two interpretation questions is that we are not supposed to quote or lift our answers from the source. We are actually supposed to explain what we think that information means. And that is exactly what I've done. Let's look at another example. The question in front of you reads as follows. Comment on the strained relationship between America and the Soviet Union that is evident in Molotov's speech. Now, when we look at this question, what part of the question tells us that this is a level two question? If you said the word comment, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level two interpretation question, we have to answer it. But first, we need to know what the question is asking us to interpret. So let's read the question again. Comment on the strained relationship between America and the Soviet Union that is evident in Molotov's speech. Now, what do you think this question is asking us to do? This question is asking us to look at Molotov's speech and to comment on the strained relationship between America and the Soviet Union. Now, the words strained relationship actually tells us that there is tension growing between America and the Soviet Union. We must identify this tension and then we must comment on it. Now, to comment on something means that you are giving your opinion on it. So, in essence, the question is asking you to look at Molotov's speech and to give your opinion on the growing tension between America and the Soviet Union. But before we look at Molotov's speech and we give our opinion, we need to know how much information we must give. So, we need to look at the mark allocation. Now, I want you to look at the mark allocation quickly and then I want you to tell me how many facts do you think we need to include in our answer? <music> 
if you said two, then you are 100% correct. Why do we say so? Because the mark allocation says two times two. Okay, so now let's quickly read the source together. And while we read the source, I want you to try to think about what parts we should highlight, which will help us with our interpretation. Remember, we are looking for evidence of tension between America and the Soviet Union. Okay, so let's read the source together quickly. So the source says, if the USA were to buy up the local industries, take over the more attractive Romanian, Yugoslav and other Eastern European businesses and become master in these small countries, it would, in practice, mean the economic enslavement of the small countries and their rule by strong, rich foreign firms, banks and industrial companies. Was this what we fought for when we battled against the fascist invaders, the Hitlerites and the Japanese imperialists? Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to take a minute and I want you to look at the source again. And then I want you to decide what evidence we should highlight, which shows us evidence of a strained relationship between America and the Soviet Union. So here I've highlighted the part of the source where we can definitely see signs of a strained relationship. We can see aggression in the words that Molotov uses. Now what we have to do is we have to take this information and we must interpret it in order for us to be able to answer the question. So let's look at the first part of the highlighted information in blue. This part reads, the economic enslavement of small countries and they rule by strong, rich foreign firms, banks and industrial companies. So what does Molotov actually mean when he says this? He actually means that America is enforcing dollar imperialism in Europe. In other words, he's saying that they are using money to control Europe. And Molotov uses words like enslavement, which has a very negative connotation to it. This word choice shows us signs of his dislike for America and what they are doing, which makes us see the tension between America and the Soviet Union. The second highlighted part that's in green reads as follows. Was this what we fought for when we battled against the fascist invaders, the Hitlerites and Japanese imperialists? Now, what does Molotov mean when he says this? Molotov is actually comparing America to the Nazis. This comparison also shows us signs of his dislike for America, which again shows that there is tension between the Soviet Union and America. Now what we have to do is we've interpreted the information, so now we have to use this interpreted information to help us to answer the question. So this is what our answer is going to look like when we write it down. You can see that I've interpreted the information from the source. I didn't quote the exact words. I also didn't paraphrase the words. So in other words, I also didn't just change the words here or there. I actually explained what those specific sentences that are highlighted means. So even if you can find the answer in the source for a level two question, remember you are not allowed to quote the words that the source uses because it is not an, ex an extraction question. It is an interpretation question. And when I mark the NEC exam, at the end of the year, this is a mistake that a lot of learners often make because they see that the answer is in the source. So they automatically use the information that the source gives them directly. But remember, that is the skill that level one is trying to teach you. 
when you are dealing with a level two question, you cannot quote directly from the source. You have to interpret the work. And remember, when we are interpreting, we are explaining what the information in the source means. So we're going to take the quote and then we are going to explain what we think that quote means. That is going to be our answer. How many times do we have to do it? It says two times two. So therefore we have to do it twice in order to get our four marks. Okay, so now that we've completed the examples and you know how to identify and answer a level two interpretation question, I want you to practice to identify and answer it by yourself. So what you're going to do for me now is you're going to download the attached activity and then I want you to take a few minutes to complete it. Make sure that you follow the instructions very carefully. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to press pause on this video. And while this video is paused, you're going to be completing the activity. When the activity is completed, then you're going to unpause this video and we're going to mark the activity together. Hello, grade 12 and welcome back. Okay, so you were supposed to complete the activity for me. So let's mark the activity together. Now the question you were asked was as follows. Use the evidence from the source and your own knowledge to explain why you think it was necessary to build the Berlin Wall within the context of saving communism in East Germany. Now when we read this question, what part of this question tells us that this is a level two interpretation question? If you said the words, explain why you think, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now we have identified this question as a level two interpretation question. Are we ready to give our answer yet? No, because remember, we first have to understand what the question is asking us to do. So let's read the question again. And then I want you to think about what this question is asking us to do. So the question says, use evidence from the source and your own knowledge to explain why you think it is necessary to build the Berlin Wall within the context of saving communism in East Germany. So what do you think this question is asking us to do? Although this question is a mouthful, it's quite a big question or a long question. If we read it carefully, then we can actually see that there's two parts to this question. The first part of the question asks us to explain why we think it was necessary for them to build the Berlin Wall. The second part of the question asks us to link that to the idea of saving communism in East Germany. So ultimately, when we are interpreting the information, we have to see the connection between building the wall and saving communism in East Germany. Okay, so now that we have identified this as a level two interpretation question, so we know that our answer has to be interpreted and we know ultimately what we need to look for or what we need to interpret, are we ready to finally answer this question? No, not yet. Because remember, we still have to look at the mark allocation. Now, when you look at the mark allocation, how many facts do we need to include in our answer? <laughs> 
If you said two, then you are 100% correct. Why do we say so? Because the mark allocation says two times two. Okay, so now we are finally ready to answer our question. But before we do this, we have to read through the information in the source. And then we need to consider what information we can highlight, which is going to help us with our interpretation. So let's read the source together. The source says, for nearly 30 years, Berlin was divided not just ideologically, but by a concrete barrier that snaked through the city, serving as an ugly symbol of the Cold War. The wall had its origins in the end of World War II, when Germany was carved into four pieces and occupied by Allied powers. Although Berlin was located about 90 miles east from the border between the German Democratic Republic, or East Germany, and West Germany, and, the, and completely surrounded by the Soviet sector, the city was originally divided into four quarters, but by 1947 was consolidated into East and West zones. In 1949, the two new Germanys were officially founded. The GDR was racked by poverty and convulsed or shook by labor strikes in response to its new political and economic systems. The brain drain and worker shortage that resulted prompted the GDR to close its border with West Germany in 1952 making it much harder for people to cross from communist to free Europe. East Germans began fleeing through the more permeable borders between East and West Berlin instead. At one point, 1,700 people a day sought refugee status by crossing from East to West Berlin, and about 3 million GDR citizens went to West Germany via West Berlin between 1949 and 1961. Okay, so now I want you to read through that source again, and then I want you to think about what information we should highlight, which is going to help us with our interpretation. Okay, so in front of you, you can see that I have highlighted three parts of the source. The first part is in blue, the second part is in green, and the third part is in purple. So if you decided that we should highlight those three parts, then you were 100% correct. What we have to do now is we have to take that information and we have to interpret that information and link it back to our question. So let's take a look at how our answer will look. So this is what your interpretation should look like. Now what you see is that I've color coded my evidence and my interpretation so that you can see how I have gone about to interpret the evidence. Now remember we're dealing with a level two interpretation question. And even though the question says to use evidence from the source, we mustn't make the mistake of quoting. Because remember, we are not allowed to quote for a level two question. We have to interpret. And interpretation means that we have to explain what we think the quote means. So let's look at our first explanation and link it to the quote. So the quote says, 
racked by poverty and convulsed or shook by labor strikes in response to its new political and economic systems. So over there in that quote, she's actually saying that in East Germany, there is a lot of poverty. And that poverty is actually showing the contrast between communism and capitalism. And ultimately, that is what our interpretation is going to be. We've got to link it back to the question. And the question says, why was it necessary to build the Berlin Wall within the context of saving communism? And if we're looking at what she's saying, then we can actually say that the wall was necessary to prevent exposing this economic contrast between communism and capitalism, which ultimately caused a lot of people to resist because that's what she's saying. She's saying labor strikes in response to its new political and economic systems. If we look at the second quote, it says brain drain and worker shortage. Now, brain drain actually means it's a term that is used when a, a lot of skilled labor leaves one country. They leave the country on mass scale. And often that can be very detrimental to a country's economy because they are they're losing their skilled workforce. So if we're going to interpret that and link it back to the question, then ultimately, she's actually saying that the Berlin Wall was created to prevent skilled people from leaving East Germany, East Berlin, through West Berlin, preventing a potential collapse of the economy of East Berlin. And then if we look at the last quote, which says 1,700 people a day sought refugee status, 3 million GDR citizens went to West Germany via West Berlin, then our interpretation of that can be that the Berlin Wall was created to prevent many people from escaping communism and, if, and that eventually would avert a crisis for communism because if so many people, if 3 million people had to leave East Germany um, through West Berlin, 3 million people is a lot. And ultimately, that is going to send a message that people don't want to be ruled under a communist state. And that's going to cause a crisis for communism. So in order to prevent this, they've got to stop those people from leaving. And the only way to do so is to build the wall. Then the last point over there, you can see that I haven't color coded it. And the reason for that is because the question says, Use evidence from the source and your own knowledge. So ultimately, that is my own knowledge. And what it says is that it would make it almost impossible for the West to spread its capitalist rhetoric in East Germany and East Berlin. So ultimately, what that means is that the wall was necessary so that the West couldn't spread their influence into East Berlin and East Germany. Okay, so let's recap what we've learned so far. So the first step in answering a level two question is you have to identify the question as level two. How do we do so? By looking at the words which the question uses. Who can remember what those words are? Explain, comment on, what do you think? Why do you think? explain the messages, use the source and your own knowledge to explain. So when you see those words, then you know that you are dealing with a level two question. And then you know that you have to interpret your answer. The second step is that you need to know what the question is expecting you to interpret. What is the focus of the question? Thirdly, we have to look at the mark allocation because remember, we need to know how much information we have to include. Then we're going to read the source. We're going to try to find the evidence in the source. And then lastly, we're going to take that evidence and we are going to interpret it. We're going to explain what we think that evidence means in order for us to eventually answer the question. So if you follow those five steps, then again, Level two questions will become more easy for you to answer.
Great 12s, this is the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for your patience and participation. I really hope that I got to teach you something in this lesson today. And remember to continue to practice because practice makes perfect. I hope that you guys all have a lovely day further.